get it out of my own house. I'm Miller Rodney, thanks for clicking on my video. <clears throat> Man, my voice. Maybe it's allergies, maybe not allergies, but maybe there's something in the air. But my voice hasn't been right for a while. A little while. Oh, I scared the bird off. God, God. The poor bird. Every time I walk by here, the bird takes off. Behold the hole. There's been some adjustments to the hole. Now I have to be careful when I go down here because I'm wearing plastic shoes. I'm not wearing hole. What would it be? You're a hole smith. A hole smith would have different shoes. But not me. I have plastic shoes. So it's getting a little bit tricky. Woo! A little tricky coming down in here. So, huh. You can see the shadow. I can see the shadow one with the, uh, on the cactus over there with the bird. So, I hate disturbing the bird. So, I'll need to stop coming out to the hole until the until the eggs hatch or else make it a minimum. Well, yeah, hopefully they're Gonna be hatching soon. There was uh, ice on the ice on the barrel out there this morning when I <coughs> came out. The birds were over there, so I went out and chipped the ice and gave them some more water. Oh boy. You know, I, you know, my my videos are, you know, nobody watches my videos hardly. I mean, if if the, if you if you did a survey of people, and you said, because uh, I've made over two thousand videos. Let's see how many videos I've made to date. Okay, let's see that information here. Uh, Twenty-two hundred and thirty-nine videos. If you, if you would do a survey, and on YouTube, as I turn around and check something to make sure there's nothing there. Uh, if you did a video, I said, okay, if a person has made two thousand videos, that's you know, let's round it off. And they get hardly any views. What does that say about the person? <laughs> well, it says that the person likes to make videos on YouTube, I guess. I wasn't going to make this video. I was just going to actually just do a little video on, on the hole because somebody had said something about like I missed the hole or something like that. Ah, I'll go make a video of the hole. Because the hole changed pretty dramatically out there. But I don't like to go out there too much because, you know, I don't want to disturb the bird. I mean, that's not exactly all. Well, it doesn't matter. Makes me makes me look good. That the reason I don't go out there too much is because I don't want to disturb the bird. But that's not really true. But every time I do go out there and the bird flies off, I go, oh, shit. The bird's on the nest. Leave the bird alone. Well, let's go here. Oh. I forgot my glasses. 
This is what people love about my videos. Is that they're like sleep. They're like this is a video that you watch when you go to bed. Just turn it on. And if this freaking thing doesn't put you to sleep, then you you know you need to seek some sort of medical attention. Okay, I see here. It was a, a comment that I wanted to. <laughs> these these comments on uh, Nietzsche was right. This is a good comment, sir. Some awesome comments there. Oh, let's see. Oh. Well, you've improved your diet and lost weight, both of which you set out to do. And it's certainly not the ethical issue, and it's certainly not that the ethical issues aren't worth considering. But, yeah, maybe the time to shift focus is at hand. Oh. oh, look, a sword. Gee, I'm shifting focus now. I get obsessed. Remember, with, remember the, I don't, for those of you who have been around, remember the sword? I did a video with a sword in it for every, every video until I don't know for how long. I don't know. here and show you all of the things that I've thought about that that would work could, that well let's say that could work if I would have spent the time and energy to do it but I mean I get something I I work it out or Sometimes I don't even work it out. Sometimes I get something, I have all this stuff, and I had to just put it back in the box and just put it back somewhere out of sight, you know. It's unbelievable. It's unbelievable how I, how I live my life. Without God, <laughs> I couldn't have made it. God takes care of people like me. He takes care of you, too. Oh... Well, maybe. I don't know. God takes care of me. I know that. I mean, where else are you going to find a guy with 20-something sewing machines and doesn't even know how he got them? I mean, I know how I got them. But what was going on, going on in my head? Look at all these things. I mean, crock pots, all kinds of crap. Stuff that people gave me or stuff that I bought or whatever. Just tons and tons and tons of stuff. Tons and tons and tons of stuff. I don't know. <laughs> I really don't. I wish I did. But I don't. I gotta go to Mexico and get my teeth fixed. Every time I turn around, it's like another thing staring at me right in the face. <clears throat> you know, I'm not... <clears throat> I'm not like a total dumbass. I mean, if I would just stick with something, I could do it. I got forced into a... When I came back from Los Angeles, I really got, got put in a, in a freaking bind, you know. Because I lived in L.A. for like 12 years or something. I had a, I had one of the coolest studios an artist could have. It was freaking awesome. It was in an old Victorian house, a Queen Anne, with a turret and all that. It was, I think it was a, uh, I can't even hardly remember now. I think it was a, called a Queen Anne from the 1880s. I had the entire attic to myself. Of course, I had to, uh, I had to, uh, I had no bathroom. 
The bathroom was downstairs. I had no kitchen, which no big deal for me. I ate out all the time anyway. I had electricity and plenty of space to do my work. And then after I lost my apartment, my studio, because uh, the city of Los Angeles in its wonderful wisdom had decided to make everything so much better by condemning everything like that. You know, you couldn't live in an attic. So, I mean, yeah, okay. I guess if there would have been a fire, it could have been a, you know, I would have had to jump out the window or something. But I had came back to New Mexico, and I had to, I had, it was sink or swim. It was freaking sink or swim. I mean, there was no, there was no, uh, no, no wife, no, no, uh, no rich friends, no nothing. Just sink or swim, buddy. <laughs> you sink or you freaking swim. So I swam, thank God. I'm getting older now. I, you know, I'm, I'm tired of it. You know, I, I don't have to work. I mean, it's not like a desperation time like it was. But uh, my finances, this is, this is a, I mean, you know, just a, just, Keeping a place like this going, you know, takes up a tremendous amount of my, of the money that I have Social Security, you know, so. So, at, you know, because of the, because of, because of the choices that I made, like, the, the prime years of your capacity to, to get something done, <clears throat> I mean, you know, all my 40s, from age 39 until 50 when I left L.A., <clears throat> was spent painting pictures and doing that kind of thing, which was good. But it didn't get me where I needed to go. It did get me, a, it did get me something wonderful, though, three weeks in Europe. It was a... Uh, friend of mine I had I had this uh, <clears throat> had this art dealer and he wasn't really doing oh he wasn't he what he was doing the best he could do <laughs> given what he had to deal with so he wasn't he wasn't doing real great so what I did There had been a show that he had put on. It was a two-person show. And I was one of the people. And I had... Uh, it was kind of a funny story, kind of an interesting story. That I said, well, you're going to have a show, so I'm going to uh, go buy some new clothes for the opening. <clears throat> so I went down to this place downtown. The guy wanted to sell me a yellow shirt and yellow pants because that was in that was a style or some shit at that time. I thought, eh, you know, I'm gonna pass on that. So I went down to this place, kinda like a uh, uh, clothing district in LA and I found a place. I bought a an Italian jacket, double breasted jacket, freaking beautiful jacket. And Italian pants I bought some shoes that were made in Spain. I bought a shirt that was made in Italy. And I had a, a Giorgio Armani tie that I found in the parking lot of the, of the uh, Museum of Contemporary Art. No, no, it wasn't the Museum of Contemporary Art. It was the uh, LA County Museum. I parked my vehicle, got out of my vehicle, and right there it was a Giorgio Armani tie. It was freaking beautiful. I lost that tie. I don't know where it is, but that was the most beautiful tie. God, it was great. So I put on my jacket and everything. I, and from so that was for that's what I had for the opening of the show. So I went. I went. That's it. That's a jacket. 
It's a silk jacket, I believe. Cloth made in Italy. Huh. It doesn't say sewn in Italy, but the cloth was made in Italy. Hmm. I don't know. Made in Italy. But uh, anyway, so there was a, a big international art show in L.A. At the, uh, at the L.A., I think it was at the, at the L.A. Convention Center, the big convention center right there at Staples Center. Next, that, that's all adjacent there. So I dressed up. I took my stuff. I went down there, and I met somebody from Europe, European dealer. And I, after he, and then after I introduced myself, he and his assistant came to my studio and took some stuff. It was great. And then later, he gave me a show, a one-man show in Austria. Salzburg. Salzburg. It was a big deal. It was a huge freaking deal. For me, it was a huge deal. For them, it was a pretty good deal, too. I'm trying to get something here to show you. This is the catalog that they produced for the show. This catalog at the time cost about, he said it was $10,000, which this is a full color catalog. So I went to Europe. The show was in Europe, so a friend of mine said, uh, where are you going? I said, no, man, I'm not going. I don't have the money to go. So what he did was that he presented me with a round-trip airfare, round-trip ticket, not the airfare, the ticket to Paris. So... I was in Paris for three weeks. I, I was in Florence, I think, for three days. Rome for three days, I think it was. And Paris for like five days. Because when I when I went when I went there, I wanted to see the ancient, the Renaissance, and the modern. And so, Florence was definitely Renaissance. Rome was Renaissance and ancient. And Paris was uh, modern. And they had, you know, I mean, I, I, I guess Notre Dame is, uh, I think that's Gothic. So there was plenty of stuff to look at. It was just a magnificent experience. So that was, that was the thing I got out of. That was, the, that was the big thing that I got out of <clears throat> doing that when I was in L.A. And it was a great experience. I don't know why I don't do more experiences like that because it's those experiences that that really, I mean, I really felt alive. <laughs> I got off the plane and I didn't know where I was. I mean, I knew I was in Paris, so now I had to figure out how to get everywhere and I didn't speak the language. And the French people were there, you know, they were cool. You know, as long as you, you know, to me, I, I knew enough French. I could say, uh, excusez-moi, um, and I, I don't remember what it was like. I'm, I'm, I'm new. I'm kind of a student of French. I, I'm not very good at it. Do you speak English? And then, absolutely, help you out whatever they could. It was beautiful. It was funny. I was when I came back. I had. 
I flew into Paris and then I got on the train and went to Salzburg and then I went to Florence, Rome, and then caught uh, Paris on the way back. And so when I got to Paris, I was at the train station and I had my bags and I was over there looking at the map. I don't know why. It, you know, <laughs> you know, it's what you do, I guess. You look at a map. I mean, I knew I was in Paris. So I didn't know. I mean, what am I going to look at a map for? I don't even know where I am. So <clears throat> this woman walks up to me and says, are you looking for a place to stay? And I said, yes. And she says, would you like to come and stay with me? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> She was a, uh, she was about, she was probably about my age. Uh, she had, uh, she had a couple of kids and, and what she would do is she lived fairly close, I guess, to the train station and, and she would come and see people there and ask them if they would like to stay because she rented a room. And so I stayed for five days there with her and her family and it was, it was beautiful. I, mean, I was hardly ever there. I mean, the whole time I was in, that was there, I was going all the time because I was so desperate to get as much in as I could. And <clears throat> on the last day, she says, did you go to Montmartre? And I says, no, I, I'm too tired. And she says, oh, we got to go. Let's go. I said, I can't go. I'm too, oh, let's go. <laughs> all right, let's go. So it, it was freaking raining and we got some ice cream and we were at, we were at Montmartre and it, it was it was a great experience for me, and that's the end of this video because I just wanted to give you an update on the whole. I'm Ella Rodney. Thanks for watching, and bye bye.